Welcome to lesson 9.3. In this video, we'll be discussing arc length for parametric equations. Recall the arc length formula from lesson 8.13. L is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Now a would be your starting x value and b would be your ending x value. For parametric equations, the arc length formula is very similar. And this formula actually comes from this formula. We don't have time to go over that one in this video, but that's where it comes from. For parametric equations, the arc length formula is L is equal to the integral from A to B. And in this case, A and B represent different times. So we could label this one T equals time one and this one T equals time two. Now we would be integrating from time one to time two of the square root of dx to t squared plus dy dt squared. And that all has a dt on the end. Now, as we mentioned, A represents the starting time and B represents the ending time. Let's try an example. Find the length of the curve defined by the parametric equation x of t equals 5t cubed minus t and y of t equals t squared over 3 from t equals 0 to t equals 2. Since this is a calculator question, all we have to do is really set up this problem and then the calculator will do the integrating for us. We would say that the length is equal to the integral from 0 to 2, since that's our starting and ending times respectively, of the square root of, and then what's dx dt? The derivative of x with respect to t? We could make the calculator do this for us, but it's really pretty easy. We have 5t cubed minus t, which means that the derivative is going to be 15t squared minus 1. So that's our dx dt squared plus our dy dt. And in this case, if we're taking the derivative of t squared over 3, that's going to be 2 thirds t, then we square that because we take dy dt squared and we stick a dt on the end of this entire integral. Then we can get out the graphing calculator and it will give us a numerical answer for that. Now, if you prefer to work through these in parametric mode, you can hit the mode button and then your calculator, you could switch it over to parametric instead of just regular functions. If you're using regular functions, you would just have to put an x in place of a t. If you're okay with that, you can leave it as a function. It's gonna be the same answer no matter what. So to get the integral, we'll say math and then hit number nine. That's gonna get us our integral from zero to two. Then we put in the square root of, and then we just enter all of this stuff. Again, it's putting the t as an x in there, but that's completely fine. And it says the length is 38.382. That would be our answer. Which of the following gives the length of the curve defined by the parametric equations x of t equals 5t and y of t equals 2t cubed from t equals 0 to t equals 4? In order to get this problem correct, you have to know the arc length formula for parametric equations. That length is going to be the, the integral from time 1 to time 2 of the square root of our x prime of t, or you could say dx dt, either one of those works. Here I'll go with prime. So we have x prime of t squared plus y prime of t also squared with a dt on the end. So then it's just a matter of plugging everything in right here. In this case, our starting time is zero and our ending time is four. So we would say integral from zero to four of the square root of, and then what's our x prime of t? The derivative of this x of t, that would be a five since the derivative of five t is a five. So we say dx dt squared plus, and then y prime of t or dy dt, what's the derivative of 2t cubed? That's going to be 6t squared. And we're going to square that entire thing as well and stick a dt on the end. Then we just have to clean this up a little bit to make it match one of our answer choices. We're still integrating from 0 to 4. 5 squared is going to be 25. 6t squared squared is going to be 36t to the fourth. And we have that dt on the end. This matches answer choice A. Which of the following gives the length of the path described by the parametric equations x equals 2 times the cosine of t and y equals 3 times the sine of t over 3 for pi over 2 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to pi. In this case, this is our starting time, t1, and this is our ending time, t2. So when we set up our integral, we're going to say our length is equal to the integral from pi over 2 to pi, since that is our lower bound and our upper bound. And then we're going to take the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Dx dt means that we have to find the derivative of this equation with respect to t. That's going to be negative 2 times the sine of t. And we square that, and then we take the derivative of this equation, and we square it. The derivative of 3 times the sine of t over 3, we're going to have to use the chain rule a bit there, that would be 3 times the cosine of t over 3 multiplied by the derivative of that inside function, the t over 3, which is a 1 third. Then we can square that as well, and we stick a dt on the end of the integral. 
Now in this situation, since we have a three times one third, both of those are gonna cancel and we just have cosine of t over three left. Then we can clean this up a bit to make it match one of our answer choices. Negative two squared makes a four. And the sine of t squared, we can just write that as sine squared of t. Then to clean up this one, if we have cosine of t over three squared, we can just write that as cosine squared of t over three. And we still have that dt on the end of the integral. Then we just figure out this matches which answer choice. And it looks like in this case, it matches answer choice C. So C is our correct answer here. What is the length of the curve traced by the parametric equations x of t equals 4e to the power of t and y of t equals 5.4 times the cosine of e to the power of t from t equals 0 to t equals 2? Let's begin by setting up our integral. Since we're going from t equals 0 to t equals 2, we'll do the integral from 0 to 2. Then, since we're plugging this one into the calculator, we could make the calculator get these derivatives for us, but neither of the functions are so bad that we can't find the derivatives ourselves. So let's make it a little bit easier for plugging it into the calculator, and we'll take this dx dt right now. What's x prime of t, or dx dt? Well, 4e to the power of t is its own derivative. So we're going to have 4e to the power of t squared plus the derivative of y of t, which is gonna be, let's see, we, we would have negative 5.4 times the sine of e to the power of t times the derivative of the inside function, which is gonna be that e to the power of t, and that entire thing would be squared. Then we would stick a dt on the end. Then we can get out the calculator and plug this in. Use math nine to get the integral. And we're going from zero to two, don't forget the square root, and then just plug all of this in. That gives us an answer of 34.875. So in this case, answer choice C would be our correct response. Let's try part of a calculator free response question involving this topic. The stem of this question is the same one that we worked through in a different video, but the question it's asking us is a bit different. Now we're doing part D. A particle moving along a curve in an xy plane is at position x of t, y of t at time t is greater than zero. The particle moves in such a way that dx dt is equal to the square root of 1 plus t squared and dy dt equals the natural log of 2 plus t squared. At time t equals 4, the particle is at the point 1 comma 5. Part D says find the total distance the particle travels along the curve from time t equals 4 to t equals 6. Now if the particle is moving along this curve, the distance it travels is going to be the length of the curve from t equals 4 to t equals 6. So what we're going to do, in this case, I'm going to use D instead of L, but it's the same thing. We're going to use that arc length formula. We're looking for the integral from t equals 4 to t equals 6 of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So we would take our dx dt, which is the square root of 1 plus t squared, and square that, plus dy dt, which is the natural log of 2 plus t squared, and we square that, and then we stick our dt on the end. Then we can plug this into the calculator fairly easily and get our and get our response. Again, use math number nine and integrate from four to six. Don't forget the square root and then plug this all in. Now for the square root of one plus t squared squared, you can just plug in one plus, and in this case it's gonna put it in as x, but it's the same thing. We don't need to do the square root and then square it. That's kind of redundant. That gives us 12.136. So 12.136 is the distance that that particle traveled along the curve from time t equals 4 to t equals 6. Since they didn't give us a unit here, our answer is just going to be that. At time t is greater than or equal to 0, a particle moving along a curve in the xy plane has position x of t, y of t, with velocity vector given by v of t equals sine of e to the power of 0.36t, comma 7.8t. I know that we haven't formally discussed velocity vectors, that's coming up in a future video, but we can infer pretty easily what it means in this situation. Now we're trying to find the total distance traveled by the particle from time t equals 0 to t equals 1. So when it says this is our velocity vector, the velocity of our x coordinate is going to be given by this, and the velocity of our y coordinate is going to be given by this. So really what we could do to make it easier, we could think x prime of t is going to be this, this right here, the sine of e to the power of 0.36t, and then our y prime of t, or dy dt, is going to be this 7.8t, since that's what they've plugged in for the velocity for x and y. Now, if we're trying to find the total distance traveled, remember, total distance traveled is going to be synonymous with arc length when we're talking about parametric equations. And we're looking to find that total distance from time t equals 0 to t equals 1. So we'll say the distance is equal to the integral from 0 to 1, of the square root of, 
and then we take our x prime of t, which is the sine of e to the power of 0.36t, and that gets squared, plus our y prime of t, or our dy dt, which is 7.8t squared, and then we just stick our dt on the end. Then we can make our calculator spit out a value for us right here. Again, use math 9 to integrate, go from 0 to 1, and don't forget the square root. Then just plug all this in. That's equal to 4.073. So 4.073 is going to be our final answer. That's the distance traveled by the particle from time t equals 0 to t equals 1. And since they didn't give us any units, we're good like that.